As I mentioned, we focused a lot this Lent around oppression to liberation. It's not a straight journey. We experience oppression, we go to liberation, we go back to oppression, back and forth. It's never a straight journey. Perhaps that's why we brought that as our theme to our Lenten journey, the importance of being able to be very directed and very specific around living a life of liberation, be that as individuals or as a church or as a nation. Our Lenten journey has brought our beloved St. Joan of our community to this somewhat snowy Palm Sunday celebration. It allows us to begin a most important Holy Week. We have prayerfully reflected on these words in scripture. And I quote, and Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor and sight to the blind, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to captives and liberation to the oppressed. It is now time, Alleluia, on this Palm Sunday, beckons us from oppression to liberation. There is, I believe, a great movement happening in this world. This movement is bubbling up in the hearts of people in pain today, as surely as those hearts that were in pain at the time in which Jesus journeyed into Jerusalem. Jesus made space and time to listen to those who were in pain. Jesus took time to heal the brokenhearted, to actually make a choice to be in relationships with others. When we honestly decide to come together and are motivated by that same revolutionary love, when we honestly risk feeling the pain of our planet and the agony of those who are poor. We can then actually come together onto the prophetic path of Jesus Christ and can in fact make change happen. The spirit of the Lord is upon each and every one of us. And that's important to embrace and to own for yourself. The Spirit of the Lord is not up on just a few select. The Spirit of the Lord is on each and every one of us, whether we own that or not. Whether we actually feel that or not, it is the truth. The Spirit of the Lord is on each and every one of us. In the same way, the Lord has anointed each and every one of us. That's also important to embrace, not on a select few, not on those paid to be or elected to be leaders, but anointed to be leaders in faith, each and every one of us. Jesus was well aware that going to Jerusalem would be dangerous. He was very aware of that. Case in point, Judas felt betrayed by Jesus and in turn would make a choice to betray Jesus. It's that old game of tit for tat. Judas wanted a military leader who would crush the occupying forces. Jesus was far from that. Jesus, Judas, was disappointed, to say the least. He was betrayed by Jesus and in turn betrayed Jesus. And that's what we do time and time again. You hurt me, I'll hurt you. And that's the game of oppression. In addition to that, the male disciples could not deny their own need to be safe 
and would in turn deny even knowing Jesus. It's important to note the female disciples stayed the course. They did not mistrust this Jesus. They went about doing the work that needed to be done, and their faith did not waver. The men, on the other hand, were fearful. Ultimately, they were cowardly. They turned away from the one that they had put their trust in, no longer trusting. And the Pharisees preferred their own self-serving message and would protect their relationship with Rome, the occupying force, at all cost. It was the perfect storm in which Jesus entered Jerusalem. It is that same perfect storm that has existed in our world right up to this very day. When we fail to believe that we can transform this broken world, when we throw our hands up and believe the lie that we cannot make a difference, that's where we run into trouble. Holy Week invites us to consider our own experiences of conflict, our own experiences of injustice, as seen in our world community, as seen in our nation, as seen in our church. And ultimately, we need to own this for ourselves. The late Desmond Tutu reminds us, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. You cannot be indifferent. So before we hear our passion today, I want to close with this brief reading from Sherry Eckert. I read this several, several weeks ago. I share it again. I want you to think about it. It's entitled, That One. I want you to think about that one throughout this holy week. To see the ones, the characters that we will hear about, who you re most relate to throughout all this holy week. This reading, again, entitled, That One. Be that one, that one who forgives when deep offense has been committed, that one that loves when no one else does, that one who gives kindness to those who are mean. Be that one who looks past insult, instead seeing the pain that motivated it, that one who shines light upon those in darkness, because the impact of being that one runs far and it runs wide. It brings healing to the wounded, it brings joy to the sad, and hope to those who are in despair. Be that one. Jesus was a victim of conscience, standing for truth regardless of the price that it would exact of him. Today, we join Jesus as he proceeds to his destiny with all the dignity that comes from living a life of integrity. St. Joan of Arc, be that one. Be that one.